What's going on guys, King Trash here back with a video on the channel and today we've recreated what we had on Sunday. Um, if you didn't watch my Grand Lux video, I did my favorite items from the Grand Lux Cafe. It doesn't matter. Anyway, they had an item called Sunday Night Pasta, which what it is is slow roasted beef short ribs, basically the kitchen sink on pasta. I used to love getting it all the time and for some reason I got the bright idea, the brilliant idea of trying to recreate it today, but obviously a little more macro friendly. Me walking through what we did, we used pork tenderloin because well, I didn't have any beef and it's a lot less fat. So you can see right now in the slow cooker, we got our tenderloin, we've got peppers, onions, I've got tomatoes, as well as some diced cherry tomatoes, obviously some garlic, lots of different seasonings in there, which I forgot half of. I'm horrible at this recipe thing. Pressure cook that for an hour until you see the short rib is starting to fall apart. Once that happened, we added some of the truff sauce to it, drained a little bit of the liquid out, but we kept some of it in and then added it slowly just so I got the right consistency. And that is really, it let that slow cook for a couple of hours actually. And of course we made our pasta, we plated it up. And then I added some Parmesan cheese. And this is what we came up with. I actually think, I haven't tried it yet, but smell wise it's pretty close. The only thing I would have done differently is I would have added more tomatoes at the end because here's a picture of the real one. I actually have a video. Um, there's some like tomato chunks in there that I, I used all my tomatoes. It's not, I don't, it's missing that. But other than that, I, I think I did a decent job, but you know, the real test is what does this taste like? So, oh, I don't have a plastic fork this time. I know y'all don't like my plastic forks, but I also didn't use ground beef just cause like, that's like protein overkill, but let's see what we got. Don't fall, don't fall, I swear to God, stay. I'm gonna let that hang too. What are we saying? I ain't gonna lie to you. I might like it a little better. Hear me out. <laughs> Just hear me out. Mine's spicier. It's got a little more spice because I use a spicy marinara. I love spicy marinara. That was like the one thing that I would have done differently with the Grand Lux. And obviously that sharpness. Um, from the the grated Parmesan. Why am I doing this like I'm putting more like I'm salt bay? You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I know somebody's gonna say this. Because I'll study about the Grand Lux food. This pasta is in no way, shape, or form. Because someone's gonna say it. It's not dry. All right. Can y'all hear the juiciness in my mouth? You get what I'm saying. Juicy mouth. Dude. Now, this is a personal thing. In fact, y'all can't see, but there's sauce on the bottom right here. Some people like their pasta with like mad sauce. And I hear you. That's not how I do it. And that's not how a pasta traditionalist would do it either. What I would prefer to do, but I didn't do it for the sake of recreating the dish because they didn't when I got it at Grand Lux is I would have let the pasta go in the sauce to soak it up. That's how I would have personally done. But I was recreating a dish and if you look at the plating on how they did it, they did it the exact same way where they placed it over the top. Personally, I like when the pasta, you know what I'm saying? What the hell? Did y'all catch that? <laughs> y'all get it. But I can understand because I grew up around a lot of different people. 
how many different ways people eat pasta. That's good, man. And I've seen a lot of different crazy variations depending on who, what family, where it came from, made pasta. Um, one thing is also a no-no for me, and really any person who's making, do not cut the pasta, don't break the pasta. Break the pasta. By the way, this is just straight water today. I didn't get enough water today. I usually finish my gallon. I didn't, so that means I don't get the extra taste. But don't break the pasta. Do whatever you want after that. Listen, you like putting sugar in your spaghetti? Do it. By all means, I'm not going to get mad at you. Will the, the entire Italian peninsula get mad at you? Yeah. I've been slayed by Italy over the years a lot. You may not realize I actually am part Italian, but yes. I am. Um, because of that, I often heard lines from my father when I made weird kinds of spaghetti, or ate weird kinds of spaghetti, like, your grandfather would be spinning in his grave. I heard that a lot. My father is a pasta traditionalist, only makes one pasta dish ever, which was... Spaghetti bolognese. That's it. Nothing else. We go out to an Italian restaurant. Spaghetti bolognese. He's making pasta tonight. Spaghetti bolognese. Any place that serves pasta. Spaghetti bolognese. That's it. It's pasta with like a meat ragu. Thick meat sauce. Very good. Coincidentally, it has become one of my favorites. I've branched off a little bit as I've gotten older. Now... My mother, on the other hand, I've told this one a few times on here, and y'all probably heard this because I haven't talked about pasta in a long time, but she had a weird thing she did with pasta. I don't know if she still does it because I haven't seen my family eat pasta in a very long time, but growing up, she definitely did this all the time. She put blue cheese dressing on her spaghetti. Like, the jar, like the, every time. One day I asked her why. What the hell are you putting blue cheese on spaghetti for? So what she explained was, you know, you gotta hear her out. I hear her by out. We, a lot of times when we made pasta, it would come with garlic bread. We make garlic bread as well as salad, which I don't eat. In my household, there was only one kind of salad that they ever ate, even at a restaurant, didn't matter, blue cheese dressing. There was no Italian, French, all, nope, blue cheese, the end. So much so, and I'm not joking, I didn't ever try branch dressing until I was in high school, swear. Never once had it. When I was in high school, um, we used to have like a big tub of ranch in the middle of the table because we had like pizza on like Fridays and on Mondays. And everybody would like, you know, put the ranch on their, their plate and eat the pizza with it. But legit, first time I ever tried it was I think like sophomore year of high school. But because she always ate salad on the same plate as her spaghetti, a lot of times the blue cheese would get on the spaghetti. Eventually she liked it so much that she just stopped eating the damn salad and just put it right on the pasta. But that was the way we ate pasta in my house. Now, you guys have seen my best friend, he's Sicilian. The pasta was much different. It was closer to what my dad made, but a lot of times the meat, there was like sausage or something on the side, and the meat was alone. So it was just like tomato, like a marinara with the pasta, then you'd have a meat course and so on. Like when Italians eat pasta on Sunday, it's like an event. Like it's not, 
It ain't like, you know, like people just have spaghetti on weekdays. No, no, no. It's like an all day event. Your mom starts cooking at like eight o'clock in the morning. And almost like how, like a lot of culture do Sunday dinner, but Italians obviously are usually pasta. For me, if there was Sunday dinner, it was, you know, like soul food, which is bad. But then, I had another friend who was Dominican. Who was both Puerto Rican and Dominican, but. <laughs> I always laugh at this because it's such like a it's startling if you never dealt um, with like <laughs> I'm sorry most of the Puerto Rican or Dominican friends that I had growing up obviously I had one that was really close to me so I'll get his house when I tell you adobo went on in everything well Spaghetti one time. <laughs> you could taste it right away too. I remember it. First time I had spaghetti, right? I was like. And in my head, I knew what it was. In my head, I'm like, there's a double one here. Then, somebody else get the adobo on a pasta for like right on top, like, like salt. I also had another friend who was Filipino and their spaghetti, I don't know if anybody's ever had it or maybe there's somebody Filipino watching. It's like, like super sweet, like really sweet. And a lot of times there was different meat in it, but it's who I noticed the most, hot dogs and spam, um, which is normal. You know, I didn't know until I got older, but if you go to like Jollibee, they serve that kind of spaghetti too. Um, shit was good, <laughs> but it was just crazy to see a lot of different ways that people would cook the same exact meal. But like their, their pasta, the Filipino one I had, it was almost like ketchup, like how sweet it was. It was like super sweet. Shit was good, but it just was like different than what I was used to. And then, my other friend who make pasta, he was black, like, they, I watched one time, it was his grandma who was cooked in his house, and she made the pasta, it was like regular pasta sauce with meat, you know, like a lot of people make on weekdays. You get a cup, like not like a measuring cup, but like a cup of sugar. No, she was cooking, like mad sugar, it was sweet, like super sugar. I remember asking my mom, I was like, how can you put sugar in spaghetti like that? I'm like, I don't know about to do that, she and she and she and she It's just crazy how something as simple as like spaghetti, which I've now talked about for the last like 12 minutes, has like such a big influence all over the world in different cultures and how different cultures make it. Even funnier, not funnier, but ironic. One of the most popular spaghetti dishes here is just spaghetti and meatballs. They don't eat meatballs in Italy. Don't make spaghetti meatballs. Like the dish, the spaghetti, not together. No. But over the years, obviously, this is more on Instagram. Anytime I will make some kind of weird pasta, because I would go nuts. I remember one time I made breakfast pasta, which is like the weirdest thing ever. I had scrambled eggs and bacon in it, <laughs> and cheese. Mad cheese. When I tell you, I was getting cussed out in Italian. The funny part is I can understand what they're saying and they don't realize it. But yeah, they were like, this is disgusting. I get it. Some people take offense to 
if you do something different with like a traditional meal that they have. It depends on the person though, you know? Sometimes water is so good. It depends on the person, but I've definitely seen it over the years, you know? Um, if you eat it wrong, for example, uh, one of the, I did uh, the, the Indian first time I ever had it, um, which is crazy because the video actually got a ton of views um, and a lot of people who are Indian were commenting and for the, excuse me, for the most part, most people were chill. They were like, yo, like, you know, try doing it this way, try, which I get it. I've never had it before, so I don't know what the hell I'm doing, which I think I said in the beginning of the video, but there were some people that were like, no, don't eat that non bread with the with the rice. My bad. <laughs> oh, shit. my bad. You know, like Italians do that a lot with their food. I used to make paella. <laughs> it was like like macro friendly paella, which means I couldn't use oil. I wasn't making it in a paella pan. Like I didn't have. I I put like different kind of sauces, like not like. It wasn't traditional. I, I will admit that, all right? Listen. <laughs> As a person who can actually speak Spanish, Spain was not having it, bro. <laughs> they were slaying me, I swear. I haven't made paella in years, but killing me. And, and so on. I mean, I can kind of understand that, but I, I personally, like, especially when it comes to a lot of, like, traditionally African-American um, I can I can say black with them politically correction. Listen, like black people, like you know, fried chicken, collard greens, stuff like that. Koreans make some bomb ass fried chicken, bro. It ain't traditional, but that's whew, they they did their own little spin. Y'all gotta try fusion food though. Like another big one. I went to La Florida Lazo a couple of days ago, right? This weekend. But the first time I went there was months ago. Why am I Eddie Murphy handing it? First time I went here. <laughs> Listen, um. And I got their most popular items off the menu. One of which was alita, like wings. It's literally the translation is they were chicken wings. Um, people were in that video just not having it. I also got like a saminta, like a sandwich. And people were like, that's not a real, like a Mexican sandwich, like a torta. So I asked them. I went, the next time I went, um, was actually, I think my, like, my sister asked me to door that, like, to get, to get her, a uh, guacamole. So I went to get guacamole, and I asked, I said, hey, listen, you said, Mita, said, are these, like, apparently they're from a specific region in Mexico, where that family that opened that restaurant that they started it are from. So, the person that said that they weren't real I think maybe just was thought it was like a different region or something because I looked it up. I even watched an episode of Bizarre Foods. You know, like Andrew Zimmern has like the stuff. It's not even bizarre anymore. He just goes to different regions. And it's the same region where they make, um, not tequila, mezcal. It's like a, so it's the same exact region. And it was the thing. But, it's the same thing as if you go to Italy, Sicilian, which the majority of people around me are Sicilian, Sicilian Southern Italian food is much different than Northern Italian food or like Napolitan, Neapolitan food and so on. So regions matter too. Um, and I guess in America, somewhat matters. Obviously, if you go to Texas, the food's different than in Florida. You know, if you go into Southern states, Florida, Louisiana, they eat alligator. Um, you can't find alligator here. Though I've had it. It was in Iowa, actually, believe it or not, at a Cajun restaurant. But so on and so forth. So different regions have different food, just like in America. Different regions speak a different dialect of English. I don't talk like I'm from Kentucky or Ohio or, or you know, so on and so forth. And I think maybe they missed a boat on that. But it's also crazy how you can break down different cultures, not just in the country but also by the region in the country um it's just dope. i love culture man and this this pasta i, I don't know how the hell i ate this so fast <laughs> that, that was like a box two boxes of pasta bro 
Oh, damn. And like a whole tenderloin. Yeah, so it was a lot of food. But I don't know. I went down smooth. And somehow I didn't choke on my food because it was not dry. But yeah, um, actually, tomorrow we won't be in the kitchen again. <sighs> the Taco Bell you saw on Monday, and I said anytime there's a new item, I gotta go get it. And there is a new item. I just found out about it, not even joking, an hour ago. Um, it is a fast food item. Maybe some of you have seen it already. Um, if, you, if you're in this far in the video, that means you watch my videos, I'll tell you. Um, it's Wendy's. So you can check Wendy's website, but they got a new sandwich. You know what that means. Your boys gotta go get it. I heard they uh, uh, remixed their fries, too. So I'll get the fries. I'll get the sandwich. I'll let you guys know what's popping. The Taco Bell thing was kind of an L, but not an L. And I also found out uh, one last thing before I did. The Taco Bell chicken is fried. Um, but the actual chicken is from a bag. It's a frozen bag of chicken, which they put in the deep fryer. Taco Bell has deep fryers now because of the fries. Um, I also found out that they fry them for four minutes. I got a person. <laughs> I got a person. So uh, they are fried, but the chicken is pre-made and it's frozen. Um, and the, the flatbread is like the chalupa. Anyway, that'll be the end of the video. Oh, the Chipotle ranch is already on the menu. So they didn't really do anything. I'm, that was a little disappointing one. Like, y'all, we waited that long for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we waited that long for, like, I could have made that shit. <laughs> Let's just keep it a buck. I like Taco Bell, but we waited, like, eight months to the end of the Chicken Wars. I was holding out to do the complete review to see if Taco Bell had something to say about it, and it came out with a snack wrap. You know? Anyway, you saw what I'm doing tomorrow, so I got to do that. But I wish you guys, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you for stopping by. All that good stuff. We will be back. I got water? Nah, I got water. Tomorrow, more content. I love y'all. The hand signs. They made it to YouTube.